Hey! Um, today, I will talk about Game of Thrones since the new season has started or ended be depending on how I am uh, uploading this video but uh, yes, I will talk about Game of Thrones um, and uh, more particularly, I will talk about the characters of Game of Thrones and who would they be if there were historical figures, if they really had existed, if they had really existed. So, uh, the first character I choose um, for that uh, video is Daenerys Targaryen. So, Daenerys uh, Targaryen if she was um, real, I believe she would be um, Boudicca. Boudicca was a um, Celtic queen who led a revolt against Rome in 60 CE. Uh, her husband was Prasatagus and he uh, divided his kingdom between his two daughters and the Roman king uh, Nero, Nero. But when Prasadakis died, everything was taken away from the daughters and Boudicca was flogged and her, her daughters raped. So Boudicca was the uh, queen of the Essenians. Uh, the Essenians were a Celtic tribe uh, and the Essenians were treated as slaves by the Romans rather than allies really, <laughs> obviously. And as a consequence, uh, Boudicca led a huge rebellion. Uh, she first attacked the city of Camulodunum, and uh, which is today known as Colchester, and she then attacked um, the city of Londonium, which is obviously modern London, uh, which had been deserted by the Romans um, upon hearing how great Boudicca's army was. And it is said her and um, the Britons killed over 80,000 men, which is a lot, 80,000 Romans. Alas, she was defeated at the Battle of Watling Street, where her army was encircled by the Roman governor, uh, Suetonius. She then uh, committed suicide as she poisoned herself uh, after her defeat because she didn't want to be taken alive by the Roman, um, the Romans, yep. So she was quite proud, just like Daenerys. Um, and well, later on she was forgotten uh, during the Middle Ages, but became um, known again during the Victorian era uh, as um, Queen Victoria was seen as Boudicca's namesake um, because their name bore the same meaning. So Boudicca was described as such. Uh, she was very tall, the glance of her eyes more fierce, her voice harsh. A great mass of the reddest hair fell down to her hips. Her appearance was terrifying. So if you think about it, much like Daenerys, she uh, is a strong feminine figure who is remembered uh, for her courage and the fact that she stood up against the might of Rome. So she is on the sides of the tribes and the oppressed uh, rather than the Romans. She is fierce, ambitious, and has a memorable hair color. So that's for Daenerys. Now, the second character I chose um, is Cersei. And uh, I think Cersei was pretty similar to Catherine de Medici. She was a queen of France from uh, 1547 to 1559 and the wife of King Henry, Henry, Henri Tour d'Auvergne. Um, so the king tried to exclude her from political affairs and only had eyes and, he and ears for his true love, um, Diane de Poitiers, Diane, Diane de Poitiers, much like King Robert Baratheon and Lyanna, except that, well, Lyanna was dead, so that's much better than uh, Catherine, who had to bear with the existence of Diane de Poitiers. Um, Catherine had no less than 10 children, but only seven survived. After the king died, her eldest son, Francis, became king at age 15. But Francis was quite sick, actually. Uh, maybe not in the same way as Geoffrey, but he was indeed sick. 
um, he married uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, who was a bit of a martyr, as she completely mesmerized the young king. And because of that, there was a constant uh, fight of power and influence between Catherine de Medici and Mary. Much like the animosity there was between Cersei and Marjorie, of course. And then um, King François died under very, very mysterious circumstances. Uh, King Francis, sorry, died under um, mysterious circumstances. Um, multiple diseases were suggested as he apparently died of an ear disease, I think, uh, an ear condition. And rumors said um, the protestant had poisoned him as there were a lot of tension between Catholic and Protestant protestants at the time of course um his brother um and Cerse, uh, Cersei's not Cersei's Catherine's second son Charles became king at only 10 year old 10 years old uh, just like Tommen and so Catherine became a re regent just like Cersei uh, she kept uh, Charles very close and just like Cersei did with Tommen and she is also blamed uh, for the St. Uh, Bartholomew's Day Massacre of 1572, which was a targeted group of murders and assassinations against the Huguenots, which were the Calvinist Protestants of France. Uh, so many wealthy and powerful Huguenots uh, had gathered to attend the royal wedding of Henry III of Navarre and Margaret, who was the sister of the Queen. But anyway, they all died. So basically, this is similar to Cersei blowing up the Sept and killing a lot of influent characters in the show. And of course, just as Cersei, she uh, cares deeply for her children um, to the point of controlling them to ensure that the throne remains theirs. All right, so that is, that's it for Cersei and Daenerys. And uh, the third one uh, was Jon Snow. Uh, Jon Snow would be, in my opinion, similar, or kind of would share some similarities with a uh, William the Conqueror. Uh, so for starters, William the Conqueror was also known as William the Bastard. Uh, he was the son of Ro Robert the First, Duke of Normandy, and his mistress, Herleva. Herleva, I'm pretty sure that's pronounced like that. He ended up becoming King of England in 1066, so he did quite well for a bastard. And he was a Norman, and as you probably know, Norman is the uh, contraction of North men. It comes from an Old Norse word, which means uh, North men. So William the Conqueror is the King of the North, the King in the North, and he is pretty similar to Jon Snow. Another fact is that William banned the English slave trade, and by the 12th century there was no more slaves in England. Anyway, and now our last character is another man, so two women, two men. He is Ramsay Bolton. Uh, so I think the character of Ramsay Bolton is quite interesting. Uh, I found two um, historical um, characters who would um, be pretty similar to him. And the first one is Ivan the Fourth of Russia, or um, Ivan Vasilievich, also known as Ivan the Terrible. Uh, he was the Grand Duke of Muscovy uh, from 1533 to 1547, and he was the uh, first ruler of Russia uh, to be called uh, or proclaimed a Tsar, yeah, from 1547. And he was described as, as someone who had a very complex uh, personality. He was very intelligent and devout, yet he was a very angry person who had um, episodic uh, outbreaks and showed proof of mental instability. And just like Ramsey, he enjoyed seeing people suffer. For example, it is said he loved watching thousands of people burning in frying pans, and he also had a love for um, impaling people. Between uh, 500 and 1,000 people were gathered uh, every day by the troops and then they were tortured and killed in front of uh, Ivan and his son. Uh, and he is also remembered for his paranoiac suspiciousness and cruel persecution of nobility. So just like um, Ramsey, he's really, he was really paranoiac. Um, paranoid. 
And the other person, Ramsey, could be compared to is le Marquis de Sade, uh, or um, his full name is uh, Donatien Alphonse François de Sade. He was a French philosopher and a writer, and he was jailed several times for sexual atrocity against women. So, yeah. Uh, so that's how it is described, like what he did to women. One of his major uh, scandals happened with a maid uh, called Rose Keller. I believe he tied her up, um, whipped her, made incisions to her body and poured hot wax in it and then flogged her and beat her. Uh, and he repeated all of that seven to eight times. And she, uh, of course, well, not of course, but like, thankfully she managed to escape. Um, but yes, so sad uh, would be a pretty good parallel as well. Uh, he resembles Ramsey Bolton a lot. So yes, that is all for um, now. Um, these are the four characters I um, wanted to talk about. And that is all for tonight. So I know it was kind of a short video. Um, but uh, yeah, good night.